As we plot our return to the skies after a pandemic that obliterated air travel, there's a battle for dominance up there. I suppose you could call it the edge of space race. And like the space race, there is an element of east versus west, but also of big versus small, of slow versus fast. As Berlin's former Tempelhof airport can testify, times change. Masks, tests and the prospect of vaccine passports mean the pandemic has changed the air travel experience, in the short term at least. But over the decades to come, the actual planes we'll fly on will change. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. So let's look at what they might look like. And perhaps more importantly, who or where will be making them. If you've been on a passenger jet at any point in the last few decades, it's statistically very likely that it was made by either Airbus or Boeing. Theirs is one of the great global rivalries pitting Europe against the US, and at times it's got ugly. A dispute that's well into its second decade over subsidies paid to the two plane makers has seen tariffs slapped on goods crossing the Atlantic in both directions. And not just plane parts, we're talking wine, whiskey and olives. That rivalry is still likely to dominate commercial aerospace for decades to come. So what do the two sides think the future will look like? Well, Airbus thinks it will look something like this. A fleet of flyers all powered by hydrogen. No more polluting kerosene. Some of the designs in Airbus's zero emissions range are familiar. Others seem almost out of this world. This blended wing body aircraft is nicknamed the Flying Wing. The company wants to have developed something along the lines of one of these three by 2035. The attempt to have an airliner by that time is, is very ambitious. Uh, what, what is likely going to happen is that there are going to be some prototype aircraft by that time, uh, small prototype aircraft for having space for maybe a few people. And there are going to be uh, successful attempts, um, uh, but there isn't going to be an airliner that, that makes truly commercial sense. To bring down costs for airlines, a whole network of hydrogen infrastructure will need to be put in place in every destination. Airbus knows that key to the success of its approach will be cooperation. We need to spearhead a one united front, all stakeholders. There are many, many reasons to believe in hydrogen. And our estimation is that we'll contribute by more than 50% along our journey to decarbonizing aviation. So what about Boeing? Well, we've seen no futuristic concepts from them as yet. But what Boeing is promising is that its commercial aeroplanes will be ready to deliver passengers to their destinations using 100% sustainable fuel by the end of this decade. It's invested heavily in research into power sources made from everything from coconuts to household waste. Boeing is also working to make its existing planes lighter and therefore more efficient. However, events over the past couple of years have shown that more radical change might be needed. Events like the grounding of the 737 MAX following two deadly crashes. Boeing is having to re-educate, if that's the right word, a variety of stakeholders that it is a business that can be trusted and that its planes are safe. Uh, and they have a long way to go. What's happened is that the flying public is much more literate now uh, about aircraft and, air and flying. So to sum up, here's how Airbus sees the coming decades for commercial flight, powered by hydrogen, and maybe on board radical new aircraft. Meanwhile, Boeing sees us climbing aboard lighter planes with lighter wings and more efficient engines and powered by sustainable fuels. But is the future theirs to decide? Could there be a plane maker to rival the big two? Well, maybe. Engineers in China have been working for over a decade on a jet that they hope can rival Airbus and Boeing's most popular planes. The state-funded Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, has developed the C919, a plane that looks like and aims to compete with the 737 MAX and Airbus 320neo. 
made in China it may be, but many of its key parts are actually supplied by tried and tested aerospace specialists from Europe and the US. We're talking things like its landing gear, engines, cockpit and control systems. So should Boeing and Airbus be worried? It's not going to be a 737 or A320 killer, you know. China has one advantage, uh, which is they have a huge domestic market. So if Comac manages to convince their, the airlines in their own country to, to buy the aircraft, then they already have uh, quite a significant market. Um, China is a, um, a very strong aviation market that is growing quite rapidly. Comac is in prime position to steal hundreds, if not thousands, of aircraft orders off Airbus and Boeing in China. But what about beyond its own market? You're going to need to persuade the airlines themselves that this hardware, uh, that this jet, is uh, reliable from a safety point of view and that its safety record is actually uh, you know, up to scratch. You've got the regulator who's also going to ask the same questions. If they make it cheap, then some, some countries and airlines um, might be willing to, to overlook uh, potential difficulties. Uh, so, so you might get to see the airplane in uh, developing countries, for example, that don't have the investment for Airbus A320, NEOs, or Boeing 737 MAX. The C919 isn't Comac's only project. It's also working on a wide-bodied jet called the CR929, and it's not working on it alone. The C in CR929 stands for China. The R stands for Russia. It wouldn't be a true battle between East and West without them. As well as its work with China, Russia's United Aircraft Corporation has also been working on an alternative to the 737 MAX and A320, the MC-21. It's expected to be brought into service by Aeroflot later this year, only nine years behind schedule. But it seems unlikely it will see service well beyond Russia and its allies. The Russians have also made clear how they see the future of aviation. They think it'll be fast. They've just announced their intention to work on a supersonic passenger jet with the United Arab Emirates. Previous Russian plans to build something based on the supersonic bomber, the Tupolev Tu-160, have now been scrapped. This joint venture is starting from scratch. But they've got competition. 18 years on from Concorde's last flight, there's a new momentum behind the idea of passenger jets flying faster than the speed of sound. And there are now some serious players in the game. Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic has unveiled designs for a Mach 3 passenger vehicle, powered, like Concorde, by Rolls-Royce engines. Then there's Boom Supersonic, who believe their jet, the Overture, could be carrying passengers by the end of the decade at a cruising altitude of 60,000 feet. Boom has attracted attention for some pretty ambitious claims. Here is the future I believe in, a future in which you can get anywhere on the planet in four hours for just a hundred bucks. Wow, really? Could supersonic travel actually one day be the affordable option? Well, maybe, but probably not soon. The extra speed that you're getting from these aircraft costs a lot of extra money. Regular commercial airlines do not have that. I do see a future for supersonic travel when it comes to business and, and corporate jets, but for regular commercial uh, travel, that's not really going to be a thing anytime soon. But not everyone sees going fast as the future. A new generation of highly efficient turboprop planes could mean we travel greener, but slower. That's just one of the many visions for air travel for tomorrow. But for any of the companies trying to realize them, there are plenty of people to win over. You've got the airlines, uh, of course. You've got the traveling public. Uh, you've got the airports. You've got the regulator. You've got the employees. Uh, you've got the media. There's also the axiom about how do you make uh, a million dollars or euros or pounds 
In the airline business, and the joke is you start with a billion. A concept, industry-wide cooperation, and an awful lot of cash. The bar is pretty high for anyone who wants to change the face of air travel. And unlike a supersonic jet, this is not an industry that moves fast. For now, like the, the typical jet airlines that, that you currently see and will continue to see for the next uh, at least 20, 30 years, uh, they are probably going to stay about the same. We've seen that the ideas are there. And be it thanks to big money backers or a global push to turn the skies green, some of them may well come to fruition. So in the meantime, keep watching the skies. Is that too cheesy an ending?